Uh, welcome back to the evidence exercise. In our last video we were talking about how physical activity and specifically muscular strength activity can help benefit our bones and our skeleton. In this video we're going to talk a bit more about how the same types of activity, so muscle strength and activity, actually affects our muscles and how it can benefit our health. So just to recap a bit on what we discussed in the last video, uh, we're going to talk about why muscle strength and activity is important and why it's recommended by the NHS guidelines. If you're going to engage in muscle strength and activity, as the name suggests, it's going to boost the strength of your muscles. It may even cause some muscle growth which has other benefits that we'll talk about in a minute. And if you couple this with a proper diet, and obviously genetics play a factor, age, then you'll experience num numerous benefits, which we'll talk about now. Increasing the amount of muscle mass we, we have in the body uh, can be beneficial for burning excess calories, uh, which would otherwise be stored as fat. Uh, in other words, having more muscle mass uh, can mean having a higher basal metabolic rate. Uh, therefore, your body will burn more calories even when it's at rest than it would if you had less muscle mass. So that means that you know fat stores will be depleted uh, as long as you eat a healthy diet, of course, which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, if we think about adding more muscle mass to our bodies and how that will affect the basal metabolic rate, and you consider that muscle cells require more energy even when at rest than fat cells do, your basal metabolic rate is going to be higher if you have more muscle mass because even when you're at rest, just to keep all the chemical balances and chemical reactions happening in your body that are required to keep you alive, your body is going to require more energy so it's going to use more energy even when you're resting in order to supply the muscle cells with all the relevant nutrients that they need. If you think about that, that, can, that kind of explains why having more muscle mass can help you maintain a healthy weight because you're going to be burning more calories even without doing any exercise uh, than you would if you had less muscle mass. Okay, so that's that's one explanation why muscle strength and activity can be beneficial to maintaining a healthy weight. Uh, there's also other benefits that have been highlighted in scientific studies that have shown that people who take part in regular muscle strength and activity tend to have lower bad cholesterol levels than people who don't. And they can also reduce their own cholesterol levels by taking part in regular muscle strength and activity. So who benefits most from muscle strength and activity? Well as we said in the last video about the bones, everyone can benefit from taking part in regular muscle strength and activity, which is why it's recommended by the NHS guidelines. Of course again, as we went over in the last video, uh, muscle strength and activity is of particular importance to women due to the added risks of developing osteoporosis. Uh, however, the added effects of certain types of muscle strength and activity on our muscles, and more specifically, the way our muscles and our brain interact with each other, uh, makes regular muscle strength and activity important for anyone who has increased risk of suffering a serious injury, such as a fracture due to falling or anything else for that matter, uh, such as elderly populations. Uh, both men and women. Okay, so what happens in our muscles when we take part in regular muscle strength and activities such as lifting weights? Well, I'm just going to explain that now. It does get a little bit technical, so we'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So if we think about what happens when we want to move our bodies, say for example our arm, when we want to do this, what's happening is uh, an electrical impulse is getting sent from the brain through these uh, nerves and pathways, down through the spinal column, through into the nerves of the arm and then directly into the muscle. And what happens is the motor unit causes the fibres that it's connected to to contract and move the arm, so we get movement. So it's basically the brain giving commands to our muscles. Uh, so on the board here I've got a picture, it's a very simplified diagram, uh, but here imagine this is the spine here. So these are your vertebrates, uh, these are the discs between the vertebrates, and then coming out of the vertebrates are nerves. and these connect into the muscle as you can see here and they won't just be connected in one point, they'll be in very random different points all over the muscle. So imagine this is a biceps muscle here, uh, obviously it'll be connected to an arm, it'll not look like this. And what I've done here is I've zoomed in, if you can imagine zooming right in on this spot here, just right into there and into the muscle fibres which is what this diagram is here. And this here is the nerve again the axon coming in and here's the motor unit and these are connecting straight into the muscle fibres and that's where the electrical impulse comes through from the brain and causes the muscle fibres to contract 
and cause movement. These, uh, these muscle fibres are all in bundles and they're connected with a motor unit. And if the brain isn't going to use some of these muscle fibres because it doesn't need to or it hasn't used them in a while, they're not going to do anything. So say for example these ones here, they're not connected to this motor unit, they're connected to another one that the brain doesn't use at the moment. They're not going to move if, so, if an impulse comes through to this one. These ones will contract, these ones will stay still. Uh, so what does all this mean for our health? Why, did, why would this benefit our health? Well, just as we lose bone mass, as we discussed in the last video, naturally as we age, uh, we also naturally lose muscle mass too. This means that we will gradually become weaker and weaker as we age if we don't do anything about it and we'll lose the benefits of having lean muscle mass that come with that. So taking part in regular muscle strengthening activity uh, will reduce the rate at which we lose muscle mass and it can also reverse it and obviously help us develop more muscle mass. So we're not saying that everyone should become a bodybuilder, uh, far from it. Um, for some, such as the elderly, who maybe don't have uh, experience or don't take part in a lot of muscle strength activity or haven't done for a long time, uh, simple bodyweight workouts such as Tai Chi are sufficient to create these, these benefits that we're talking about, while others, usually younger people, will, mo will notice more benefits from going to the gym and lifting free weights, for example. Always make sure that you consult a medical professional if you're not sure about what type of muscle strength and activity is suitable for you, especially if you have a pre-existing condition. Uh, the good news is that there's an activity out there for, for everyone, to suit everyone. That amazed me, like, how they managed to stay in shape. Right? Because <coughs> gym turned laundry. Junk every night. <laughs> Yeah, but Jim, Tim, <laughs> yeah. I think mean, they ate a lot. They always had like big massive plates of pasta and stuff. Right? No, so. that's only on Sundays. Mm. You can watch it obviously, it's obsessively no. as I do. <laughs>